Now I have a tip. I'm going to insert in here uh, a little tutorial tip that I came up with for dealing with blending because I won't, uh, when I use Krynic, I use the loop method because when I first started working with Krynic, I was trying to, you know, kind of start it and then capture the, the, the little threads underneath to, to anchor it down to start your thread and it was horrible. Thank goodness for floss tube that taught me the loop method and you know I will never use a single strand of cryonic. Never. I will only use a loop method and you know you think well it only calls for one strand of cryonic. Too much bling? Is there such a thing? I don't think so. So I am going to use the loop method and I will show you, I'll, I'll insert uh, a little thing in here that shows you um, if you want to, if they recommend using a string of a strand of DMC with a strand of, of blind blending filament, I've got a suggestion for how to do that, and I'll include that in here. All right, so getting started here, uh, if I have a situation where I need to blend DMC with Krynic, um, typically it's going to call for a strand of each. I will do a single strand of DMC and two strands of Krynic, so I can use the loop method with the Krynic. It's just much easier to handle. I don't find that it's overly bulky or anything. And really, if you're looking for shiny stuff, the more the better in my book. So I've just cut a piece. You don't want to use too long pieces. Um, it's a little hard to tell here, but this is about um, a, you know, the, the thing next to it. This is about a seven inch strand, I would say, of DMC. And then I'm just going to take some Krynic and I'm going to do twice the length because, again, I'm using the loop method, so I'm going to double it over. So I'll measure it out against the, the DMC. I've got twice as much here. I'll make a little cut. And now I'm going to put the, the Krynic aside. I'm going to pick my DMC up. I'm going to start out, thread my needle with the DMC with a single strand. And I'll go in and make my first stitch. And going down to make my first leg, like I would normally do. I'm stitching with a single strand. Nothing different here. And then I'll start in the next hole over just to secure it. And I'll go over on the back. And I'll make sure that that's tucked under. So that's secured. Nothing new there that you haven't seen before. And I'll take my, my thread off, my DMC thread off the needle. I'll go back and get my Krynic, double it up, put the, the loop through the needle eye, and make sure the lengths are about the same length on the ends, so that when you're pulling it through, those don't get stuck. And you want to have more of your looped end than your non-looped end. You see how, how futzy this is. It always wants to curl around on you. So in this case, instead of going up from underneath, I'm going to start at the top of that stitch where I put the DMC. And then I'm going to come up I'm not going to go all the way through, but I kind of come up from the bottom and leave a little bit of that out. And this is just your regular loop stitch. If you're not familiar with this, you should get familiar with it because it's fabulous whenever you do two strands of floss. So I'm now at the bottom, and I just want to go back through the top that I started in. And I have my first stitch, pull it through so, so it looks flat. So now I've got the DMC underneath, and I've got the two strands of Krynic on the top. I come back up the hole where the DMC is coming up for the first time, or this last time that I did it. And now, so I don't have to re-thread the Krynic, I'm going to just kind of move those out of the way. I'm going to take my DMC and just thread that onto the needle. So I've got all three things on my needle. easier said than done. There it is, pull it through. So 
there we go. I've got three strands and now I just keep stitching. So I'll go back up to the top, go through with all three, pull them all through. I wonder. So just regular stitching. Now occasionally, I don't see it happening quite yet, but there is a little um, polyester, I almost call it the spine of the crinic, and it's really the backbone that kind of holds it together. So I don't get too worried about the fact if I get some of that kind of loose, because once I finish up doing a bunch of my X's here, it's going to be secured enough. If you've tried to ever unravel Krynik, good luck to you. Um, so I don't think there's a real risk if you get some loose um, spines, uh, that, that filament that is in there, the, the polyester filament. Um, it's, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's black, depending on the color you're working with. I would just, once you get all your stitches in there, if it bothers you, just kind of trim it off and I haven't any problems with that. So that's kind of how I would recommend that you do your Krynik with your, your blends. If you're just using two strands of Krynik, you know, even if it calls for one, I would just use two and use a loop method.